Data management can be a challenging thing. And one of the things that is increasingly popular is data mesh. So today we'll talk about why you might want to do a data mesh. And with us is Simon Hara of InnoQ. Hey, Simon, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Doing fine. Thanks for joining. You have translated the data mesh book into German. So you really know your, your data mesh stuff. So let me very briefly ask you as a start, why are people looking into data mesh, generally speaking? When you talk to people about data mesh, what are their primary motivations that they come up with? Well, first, I want to know what's it all about, but we have another video for that. Um, but when you, when you really think about why, why you want to use data mesh beyond the hype or actually for your company, it's about basically scaling your um, analytical capabilities in your company. And the problem with scaling, they have um, pains in their central data team that they normally have because it's a central data team. And a lot of well, questions are sent to that central data team. Um, they, they need to do analytics for a lot of people and they have to grab all the data all around them to answer those questions. And, and they have to understand all the data they grab from everywhere and also understand the questions and then they can provide the answers. And that's a tough job. And data mesh means to basically, yeah, scale data analytics by decentralizing the central bottleneck data team into these smaller teams. And when you think of well, software engineering, well, we, we did a little bit of decentralization for some time now. That's very true. But let me first ask so that you have an easy thing to answer. Why don't I just hire more people for my centralized data team? <laughs> great, great question. Um, the, the problems don't, don't go away because it's um, more and more teams basically are spinning up with more and more domains, more and more data pipelines there. And, and just staffing a few more people that are very hard to hire and very expensive in the central data team doesn't solve really really lot it's like the drop on the on the hot hot stone basically yeah yeah and, and of course i i, <laughs> I, I agree but it, it's to me it's funny because it really seems like you already said in software architecture and in some other things as well we've seen that once a discipline becomes too successful so to speak or just becomes more and more widespread throughout the organization, scaling typically doesn't work in the way that you just hire more people for centralized things. So, so we've seen the same in API management and other areas. So what's, what's the general idea around not increasing your centralized teams, but instead going in the direction of the data mesh of a decentralized architecture? So again, the, the bottleneck is basically domain knowledge. So what you want to do is build small teams around a specific domain, a specific well, on it context or whatever you say it from domain driven design, and they can solve the problems in their, in their domain where they really know their, their way around. And, and that's what you basically want to do in, in software engineering. We already did this. We've, we've created small teams, staff teams, uh, that, that do the, the operations, that do the delivery, like the development. Um, they, they now do also do security and finance. So they have to do cost controlling for their cloud costs. And, um, and the next basic logical step from their point of view is, okay, let's also do this analytical part, data analytics part as part of this team, because there's the domain knowledge and you want to make sure that where the domain knowledge is, there's the capability to do data analytics and that's how you scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, you don't have it to sell to me. It sounds sounds good to me. <laughs> but now the interesting question, since I'm convinced now that I should go in this direction of decentralizing things and, and mm -hmm. starting with the data match, how do I do it? Well, you have to watch the, the video we did before where we say, <laughs> what is the data mesh, uh, how it does it look like, and, and how can you start? So we briefly discussed four things in that video. So what are these four pillars? Just briefly mentioning them so that people know what to expect. The central principle is, uh, again, domain ownership. Uh, no, where it's, about, it's about domain knowledge and, and ownership. And uh, the second is sharing data as a product. So product thinking applied on a self-service data platform, the, four, the third principle. 
And when you now are all on the platform, everybody's building their own stuff, you need governance, of course. And that's where federated computational governance comes in. Okay, so that sounds interesting. And uh, yeah, everybody, if you're interested more in data mission, how to do it, check out that other video. And I think that's all that we wanted to discuss today. Thanks so much for joining, Simon. Yeah, it was nice being here. Take care. And thanks everybody for watching. If you found it interesting, give a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And with that, we're done. Until the next time, keep getting APIs to work. Bye, everybody.